Hello William G Axley and welcome to another assembly. It's Reverend Sarah and it's great to be joining you and I'm joining you in school this week although it's virtually I'm with you as you are back in school. I hope that coming back this week has been really good fun to see friends, see your teachers again, to be together as a group not just on Zoom or in other ways but to actually be there in the classroom together and be able to have fun together and share some of your stories and learn together. So I hope that you have enjoyed coming back to school and doing something a bit different. You've been at home now for several weeks now and you've done so well, but it's great that you are back learning at school at this time and being together as community. And we're thinking today about community in our assembly. We're thinking about Bishop Stephen's Lent Challenge. If you look behind me, You'll hopefully be able to see on our altar, which is our table where we share the bread and the wine, that we've got a purple frontal, so a front piece of cloth to our altar. And that front is purple because we talked about Lent just before half term. We talked about how Lent is a season of preparation. And so we thought about how it's a time of getting ready for the things that are to come. And for us to come is the Holy Week, the week where Jesus had that last supper with his friends. That day, Good Friday, when Jesus went to the cross. And then Easter Sunday, when Jesus rose from the dead. And so at the moment, we are in Lent, that time of getting ready for that. And the purple is a sign in the church of Lent. But we're following Bishop Stephen's Lent challenge. We are now on week three already. I can't quite believe it, but we are in week three of our Lent challenge. And we thought in the first week about Noah and the story of the flood and the rainbow. We thought about the rainbows that have been round about our village and in our homes. Last week we thought about a different side of hope. We thought about the hope from individuals and we thought about that story of the Good Samaritan or the kind stranger. The person who was the least expected person to stop when that man had been injured. And we heard about how the priest went by, the other person who worked at the temple went by, but actually the person who was a Samaritan, I remember Jews and Samaritans didn't get on very well, that was the person who stopped, who picked up this person, put them on his donkey and took them back to a place of safety. And so we thought about where do we find hope in others? Well, today, as I said, we're thinking about hope in our community. Now, I know you're not all from Yaxley. You come from some other communities. So you might want to think about those. You might want to learn a bit more about Yaxley. But many of you will know some of the things that I'm talking about today. And as we look around our community, our community has been very different for a year, as your school community has been. And as we think around the community of Yaxley, I wonder where are the places that need hope? Where are those places that we can bring hope? And what's already going on here? Well, I love this village. I went for a walk with a lady last week who's just moved to the village. And I was able to take her around the village and show her some things and show her our shops, show her some of the other places. Um, so we have, we've got Fourfield School as well as Willard de Yaxley and Yaxley Infants. And we have community halls. We have places where people can meet together. We've got playing fields, we've got recreation grounds, we've got lots of amazing things. Lots of the groups that have been taking place over the last few weeks, on, sorry, lots of the groups who would normally work um, and would normally be there have not been able to take place for the last year really. And some places are now starting to put plans in as to how they can start having their groups again. And we're planning to how we can reopen our church towards the end of this month and gather together just for a little while. So I wonder for you as a school, where are the places that you as a school bring hope? Well, I can think about really simple things, about things when I'm maybe coming to the shopping centre in Yaxley at the time that you're going in and out of school. And you're always so lovely and you always say hello to me. And that's been really kind. That gives me hope and it gives me a smile in the morning or afternoon when I see you. The way that you behave around the village equally. It's lovely to see you walking with friends, talking to them, being with families and just seeing you about the place. But I know that you do other things than that. One of the things that you do, I'll come on to, is something that our church does as well. But you are a school that cares for each other and are a community in themselves. Communities look like lots of different things. So Yaxley is a village, it's a community. We talk about our church being a community, our church family. 
You might have a family community. You might have a friends community. You might have a sports club community. You might have something else that you're interested in that is part of your community. And all those different communities are really important that we give to those and what we can bring to them and what they can also give us. So you might belong to a club, you may still be able to go, or you may have gone before, and you really enjoyed that for the activity you did and maybe the people you met there. Around our village, we have things like brownies, rainbows, guides, scouts, cubs, I have to think of them all now because they've changed a lot in, um, since I was younger. So we've got all of those things that are places where people go and have fun and learn together. But also, brownies and guides and cubs and scouts are all about as well your service. What can you give? We have people who are helping out in different ways. They might be helping somebody um, who maybe is alone. So we've got things like that going on in the community. We had some wonderful clubs running before we had to go into lockdown, which were supporting older people in our community. Right next to your school, you've got the Annabelle Davis Centre, which is a place which is supporting people's mental health and well-being. So we've got lots of different communities around our village that bring hope. And you as a school also bring hope in the way that you learn together, in the things that you are doing and in the way that you reach out into the community as well. So I'm going to go for a walk now. And I wonder what you think the church does in bringing hope. What would be the things that you might list? You might know about what the church does. You might not know what the church does. What kind of things do you think the church might do that brings hope? Well, in normal times, we would have all kinds of groups. We would have people meeting here. We would have some groups for people of different ages. You might have come to Sparks, and we really miss Sparks, because uh, we loved having Sparks with younger children and their carers. We had groups for older people. We have discussion groups. We have our Sunday morning groups. I'm just going to bring you over here. There's some of the activities that our Sunday morning groups have done as well. One of the things that we do as a church is we sponsor a child in Rwanda, a child called Hope, and we pay some money to enable him to go to school and receive the things that he needs. I sponsor a child as well, not in that place. I sponsor a child in a different area. And that's one of the ways that I try and bring hope to someone who has less than I do. So I sponsor a child called Soma, who's a little girl, um, and I give her some money every month to help her um, in being able to go to school um, and, again, do the things that she needs to do that are the basics. One of the things that you support as a school and we support as a church is Yaxley Food Bank. So Yaxley Food Bank is something that you support as a school. It's something that people in our community support and it brings a huge amount of hope to people. So when people don't have enough food because maybe money is difficult or short because of whatever reason, we are a place where people can come and they can get food and we'll give them some food for, for a couple of weeks to make sure they get through and try and give them some help to find other ways. Now right next to our sign are some of our donations. I'm just going to let you see those. So we have a crate where food is collected. A lot of food at the moment comes to my front door and I save it for it to go up to our store. But that's one of the amazing ways that you as a school and we as a church and our whole community of Yaxley, it's not just a church thing, it's something that the whole community takes part in. Because we don't want to see anybody going without food when we can provide that for them. There might be times in our lives where we have to, we, we might all need something like that because something goes wrong or we lose a job or things happen in life that makes it really difficult. But because you collect, and I came to collect an absolute car full um, just after harvest and brought it to our food bank store, every day we tend to get bags of food left on our doorstep. And that's food that is being donated to the people who are in need. And then we, they come along on a Monday and Thursday to church and we're able to give them that food because of your kindness. So we can show hope through doing things like that for people. 
through donating where we can, through being parts of clubs um, and things like that, because they bring a huge amount of hope and life to our communities. So those of you that are doing brownies and scouts and cubs and things online through Zoom, it's brilliant because you're coming together and you're sharing your ideas and your thoughts. So we can bring hope to our communities in lots and lots of different ways. So how do you think the Bible might inspire us about bringing hope? Well, you won't be surprised that the Bible has got many stories about hope. It's got stories about the way that people did really kind things. And it teaches us about how Jesus lived his life. Because he wants to show people the hope that they had when they came to know him. And then they would come to know his father, God. And so the way that Jesus lived his life was one that offered hope to those around him by his preaching, his teaching and his healing. Can you think of any Bible stories that might bring that hope? Perhaps you can think about our story from a couple of weeks ago of Noah and the flood, about how that dove went out and they, met, they didn't come back and they knew that they could go out, and that beautiful rainbow. And we can think about that rainbow being hope. We're going to think about a different story this morning, but it also involves Samaritan and Jew, a bit like last week. Jesus was Jewish. Now, that's a little bit strange because we talk about the Christian faith. But Jesus grew up in the Jewish faith. Um, and then Christianity didn't really become a term until after Jesus had died. So Jesus was there one day and it was a really hot day. Now, I am in the freezing cold church today, but it was a boiling hot day where he was. And his disciples, his friends, had gone off to go and get some food because uh, they wanted to get something for them all to eat. And Jesus was standing by a well. Now, we don't have many wells in this country today. Other countries do because that's the way they get their water. But wells are structures that you could get water from because they go down deep into the ground. And Jesus wanted a drink. And this woman came along. She came along in the heat of the day, so kind of midday. She came along to collect water. Now, this woman was a Samaritan and Jesus was a Jew. Can you tell there might be a problem here already from our story last week? But Jesus doesn't worry about those kind of barriers that we might think about, about how we're different. Jesus loves everybody. And so he spoke to that woman. We don't know her name. He spoke to her and said, would you get me a drink? And she was really confused because she knew that he was Jewish and he wasn't from their area. And she said, but why do you ask me for a drink? Now, we've got two big things that could be difficult here. We've got Jews and Samaritans. We've also got men and women because men and women would often not talk together. They would be separate um, in different things that they did. So the fact that Jesus is Jew who was a man, was asking the Samaritan woman for a drink. Just amazed her. She, was, she didn't quite know what to do with this. And she said, you're asking me for a drink? And he said, yes, I am. And Jesus went on to teach about who he was, about how he is the water of life. It's a bit of a strange term, isn't it? But we know that we need water in our everyday. We know that we can't survive without water. As a Christian, I know that I can't survive without Jesus. I need the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God in my life. And so Jesus was saying that he is the water of life. And if that woman came to know him and know who he was, then she would also receive this living water, this water of life. And so this woman was astounded because Jesus knew all sorts of things about her that he, he wouldn't have known. He shouldn't have known. And she goes off into her village and she tells people about this person, about this person who's there talking to me and he knows lots about my life. And lots and lots of people came to meet Jesus that day because of that one woman. And there are lots of stories in the Bible about how people come to know Jesus. And it's usually through someone inviting them to do something or God meeting with them. Today we know that God still meets with people. And we know that when we meet together, God is with us. God is always there, whether we are with others or not. So that's one story about Jesus and the woman at the well. I'm going to read you another story. And it's from the book of Luke in the Bible. And it's called, it's called Beating the Paralysed Man Brought by His Friends. So I want you to imagine one day Jesus was teaching. 
The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting nearby. Now these are people who didn't agree with what people, what, what, with what Jesus was saying and doing, and they would often try and catch him out. But they were sitting, listening to this teaching, probably waiting for Jesus to do something wrong. And the power of the Lord came to Jesus for him to heal. But just then, some men came carrying a paralysed man on the bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down on his bed through the tiles in the middle of the crowd. Okay, sorry, I had to stop and cough, but it's so cold and here it's getting to my throat. So some people brought a man onto the roof of the place where Jesus was teaching. And they let him down. They took the tiles of the roof off and they let this man down on his bed. Think about being on a blanket and being let down through a roof. And they landed him straight in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw the faith of this man's friends, he said, your sins are forgiven. Then those teachers, those scribes and Pharisees, those people trying to catch Jesus out, said, who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questioning, he answered them, why do you raise such a question in your hearts? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? But so that you may know the Son of Man, which is Jesus, has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the one who was paralysed, I say to you, stand up and take your bed and go to your home. Immediately he stood up, took what he had been lying on and went to his home, glorifying God, so praising God. Amazement seized all of those who were there, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, we have seen strange things today. What an amazing story of those friends who had hope in Jesus. They had so much hope that they took their sick friend to Jesus. They let him down through the roof and Jesus healed him and he got up and walked. So we never know when we can be hope today to people in our community. We never know when your school can be hope to people in the work that you do and the things that you are doing. We can all play a part in bringing hope to our community and being hope in our community. I just want you to stop and think for a moment about where could you bring hope in the community? Maybe in your home, maybe in your school, maybe in, your, in our wider community. What could you do? Have a think about that and then I will pray. So let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for signs of hope in our community, for how lovely and kind people are to each other. We thank you for our friends and our teachers and our school staff, and that we can be back there today. And we thank you for our families and for those who cared for us. Help us today to think about how we can be hope in our school community, in our family communities when we go home, and in our wider community of Yaxley and beyond. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to use the prayer that Bishop Stephen has set for us. And it says, as children of this world, let us shine, let us shine. As children of this school, let us learn, let us learn. As children of this family, let us love, let us love. And as children of God, bring us hope, hope, hope. Amen. I hope that you have a great week, whatever you are going on to do this week. And it's probably quite close to the weekend now. So you might well be looking forward to some time at home or outside now. I'm just going to bring you back to our window because this is one of our signs of hope in church. not that easy still to see the star but you can just about see the outline and that star is there as a sign of hope as a sign that as a church community we will come back just as your school community has gone back and we look forward to that so if you go into this week take care of yourselves and stay safe 
and I'll see you next week. Take care, God bless, bye.